Welcome to another edition of the Baked and Awake podcast. Cannabis, conspiracies, and you. Since 2017. Welcome back, everybody. We made it. This is your host, Steve, and uh, welcome once again to the Baked and Awake podcast. As of the time of this recording, it's Wednesday, January 27th, 2021. And you just heard the, uh, in my opinion, amazing new podcast theme song uh, created entirely uniquely and um, as a gift from a friend of mine and longtime Instagram follower who became a friend, uh, the Family Quad, uh, a.k.a. DJ Quad, the artist who creates the beautiful webcomic, The Augmented Life, that he makes with the family of characters that surround the central character, DJ Quad. I plan to use the new theme music throughout the year and uh, sort of to become the new vibe of the show, the new brand of the show. Um, it's a new year, right? Uh, this is only our second episode of the new year for you. And uh, last thing you got from me a couple weeks back was really a sort of a transcript of a conversation that I had initially over on YouTube with my friend Andreas Exertus. Uh, Andreas has been my guest a few times now. We talked on YouTube most recently about getting ready to retire from social media. Um, it was a great conversation. Andreas had a lot of actionable uh, steps that any of us can take as we want to begin to improve our sort of digital best practices in our lives. Um, so if you didn't hear that episode yet, if you haven't listened to the most recent episode of the show yet before today, I definitely recommend it. There'll be more on this topic in the coming weeks as I personally continue to sunset my social media accounts of different kinds in different places. Um, those of you who follow closely, know right now that you haven't seen anything from me on Instagram in most of a month. Uh, maybe a month now. Um, hardest thing to quit since quitting smoking cigarettes. Seriously. Just, uh, we've always known what a dopamine hit these apps are, what a, you know, sort of low effort vanity feeding activity it is to interact with these apps as fun as they are as entertaining as they are uh, the conversation last time around with Andreas was couched almost entirely in terms of sort of the recognition that the terms of service that we are accepting on all of our social media apps, and in addition to our social media apps, all of our most treasured uh, convenience and lifestyle apps, our Amazon shopping app, maybe it's Etsy, could be your uh, Postmates or Uber Eats if you're, you know, a, a urban city dweller who orders lunch to your office from time to time. None of these platforms are privacy respecting. None of them. And the extent to which any of them 
do put up a token fight to safeguard your privacy, the privacy of any of their users, their customers, is, um, well, I said it, token at best. Um, that was the topic of the last episode, so I'm not going to belabor it um, in painful detail right here and right now. Okay, um, no need for that. But it bears repeating because this is a big deal. Um, this is a like a paradigm shift in my own mind and in terms of the podcast and its future. Okay, I'm sitting here talking to you in 2021, talking to you about my podcast, a digital entity, a, a creation of the 21st century and something that has entirely relied upon some level of, you know, continuous maintenance of a social media presence, a wannabe brand on my part. Um, and this applies to all independent creators to some extent that, you know, this is This is not how you how you do it. Okay? This is not how you do it with a podcast. You don't you don't have a podcast and say, "I'm off social media. I'm not going to talk to y'all on Facebook. I'm not going to talk to y'all on Instagram." I'm not on Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter. I mean, yes, there's an account. You know, I suppose if you DM me, I might I might eventually check the Twitter. Um there's two-year-old messages in my inbox in Facebook that I just haven't even looked at. In the case of any, you know, relatives or anything like that that I happen to catch that were still in my inbox there, if I if I had been by Facebook to, like, literally, like, tactically lurk and sneak in and look at a group or something like that, and then I see all these old notifications. Because, again, I, I talked about this in the episode uh, with Andreas, uh, I'm telling you I'm getting off social media. It's a work in progress. It's a matter of I haven't utilized Facebook in two years. I haven't utilized Instagram in over a month now. Um, have I deleted those accounts completely yet? Truthful answer, no, not yet. Um, it's a breakup process. It's a divorce process. It's messy. I do intend to fully shut down Facebook and Instagram and more or less, you know, wipe those accounts from existence. Uh, does that mean that, like, the Alphabet Boys or Facebook themselves couldn't look at old archived copies of my account? Of course they can, I'm sure. Um, but from a perfectly public and straight up and down like regular person standpoint um you know these accounts are on their way to disappearing for good that is the only way uh that you can finally be free of things like tracking cookies that will follow you from those websites um that are reactivated every time you use third-party authentication to um sign into another application or platform somewhere else on the internet um, how many times have you come to a new site whether it's a discord or an etsy or something else like that and they're like oh sign up here and fill out our stupid form or use google or facebook to authorize your account right they're the two biggest i think i think twitter does a little bit of third-party authorization as well authentication excuse me um Every time you use your third-party account to authenticate for another platform, you've reaffirmed your relationship with that Facebook or Google initial account that you're using to like say, it's really me, you guys. Look, I'm the same guy as I am over on Facebook. Um, you've now renewed your commitment and connection to that Facebook, that Google, and their all of their data tracking now has a new beautiful data point, that being, oh, they're on Etsy, they're on Discord, they're on wherever. And um, 
using the same identity. You know, I hasten to point out something that I wish I didn't have to point out, but I'm not doing anything nefarious, uh, devious, or even questionable on the internet. Um, you know, I've never ordered mystery boxes from the dark net or anything of the sort. Never ordered drugs from the Silk Road or anything. Um, so uh, this isn't a matter of needing to, to cover my personal tracks because of some bad acting that I want to be free to perform online. Um, this is a, a simple matter of we've all known better. We've been knowing better. We know better right now than the way we're behaving online. We are collectively as a people. A people. <laughs> we're collectively acting like a bunch of babies out here. Babies who trust our caretakers to protect us and allow us to have fun in this sandbox that they've created for us uh, while preventing us from injuring ourselves or others. Don't believe the trap. Please don't believe the trap. Listen to my last episode. Um, send me an email. Comment on the episode on YouTube. It's probably the best place to interact with me. The YouTube community is probably the most um, responsive and, and interactive with me at this time. Uh, and that will, for the time being, remain my last toehold in traditional social media space and I'm lumping YouTube in with the social media world here. Uh, it's the closest thing Google has to a social media network uh, with the demise of the uh, never loved and hardly adopted Google+. Plus. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world after Google. It's the largest video repository in the world. Uh, my entire YouTube account is mirrored presently at library.com. Uh, library is L-B-R-Y. Uh, you can find uh, it very easily on the internet by literally um, DuckDuckGo searching or Google searching that L-B-R-Y, all capitals. Um, we'll get you to their website. Library and Odyssey are a, a new alternative to YouTube. They have some intriguing tools, including the ability to register your YouTube account with them. I think I used third-party Google authentication to do it. <laughs> oh. But my library channel automatically syncs with my YouTube channel and pulls over every new published post there um, to library. Early signs indicate that library might be a nice place to be if you were remotely concerned about losing your YouTube channel at some point in time, which, all right, I, I'm going to tell you two really brief stories about this and we'll move on from this subject. A week ago, I'm watching YouTube. I watch a small channel from Australia called The Earth's Histories Confusing. Ma'am, if you're hearing this at all, uh, at any point in time, I, I love your channel and appreciate all the work that you do. The Earth's history is confusing. This lady, as I said, lives in Australia, posts a lot of great videos, um, fringe research topics, a lot of the stuff that I'm interested in and find fascinating and question regularly. Uh, she seems to question in a lot of her video topics. Her video um, was the video in question had just been published. It said, you know, something like two interesting articles I found. I go and I, I, I see the notification for the video come up. So it's a brand new video. I'm in YouTube at the moment that it comes up. 
I go ahead and click on it. I'm like, I'm going to be one of the first to watch this this video for this lady. Uh, watch the video. It's 10 minutes long. The video is 10 minutes of her talking about um, some stuff that went down 10 or 11 years ago during the swine flu pandemic outbreak. I find myself, even as I'm beginning to relate this story to you, I'm mentally reshaping my language, my phrasing, my tone, uh, in order to try to attempt to somehow stay on the correct side of the wrong think police. Um, this is why. The video covered two news articles from 11 years ago. I, for some reason, felt compelled to pay really close attention to this video. I, I, I navigated, I, I watched on screen and saw the URLs that the presenter of the video was using and manually typed them into my own browser and found each of the articles. Um, and I was sharing the articles with my wife real time um, on the other side of the house just because we're both following the current state of the current pandemic very closely, obviously. Um, and I was like, look at these interesting articles. One article was talking about, you know, was this a, uh, you know, was the, was the pandemic as bad as predicted? And, uh, the answer was no. And then, um, was it used as an excuse at all by pharmaceutical companies to land some contracts for that vaccine for that swine flu? Um, it would appear from the contents of the article that that was possibility that that, you know, could be, it could be go down in history that way, that that was what went on at that time. Uh, it's not important for me to share everything about this video with you right at this moment. The, the, what is important for you to understand is it was a real video. I watched it. She at no point in time talked about beer virus or scamdemic or used, um, you know, a argumentative tone, um, uh, was hollering about the New World Order or Bill Gates microchipping us or anything. She's talking about two 11-year-old articles that she cited, that she showed, that she shared. These were articles from mainstream sources like The Guardian, UK. You know where this is going. That video was taken down minutes later. By the time my wife came in, on a lunch break to come over and chat with me and I said here look let me play that video for you now it was gone it was gone my comment to the earth's history confu the earth's history is confusing on the video underneath it because I was one of the first viewers and I commented on it you know kind of like a hey good job this is a great uh, article uh, was gone it was even scrubbed from my YouTube history okay it wasn't one of those oh this video has been removed it was gone from my history you guys okay now uh i will say that i do believe she followed up and cried to youtube about this particular video and managed to get it put back up if i'm not mistaken which great job kudos to her that's a triumph um and usually pretty arbitrary when you're able to have that kind of uh that kind of interaction with YouTube when they've struck something down. Okay. Um, but that happened. Okay. That happened. And had she not complained, uh, the video would definitely not have been restored. Uh, she's a very small channel, right about my size. I think she has like 1500 followers. I'm, you know, just under 2000 followers, subscribers on YouTube, excuse me at this time. Uh, so, you know, small channel talking about a topic, uh, you know, with all n normal decorum and politely and making no, uh, you know, grandiose claims, uh, you know, uh, committing no egregious errors as far as I can uh, tell in terms of, you know, spreading misinformation or anything of that sort. Um, but of course, who am I kidding? I don't get to decide what is misinformation or not. I'm not the arbiter of my own truth and neither are you. I'm being fact checked live right now by somebody somewhere that I don't even know, but who undoubtedly were they to come across any of my content would find plenty of things to take exception to. Uh, 
So that's the Earth's history's confusing story. She lost a video. She managed to get it back up. Hmm. Okay, great. Happy ending, right? Another story I heard yesterday. This is a story I heard and saw firsthand. I was over on library uh, watching the Corbett Report, James Corbett. Uh, I've been told by somebody on the internet somewhere once that Corbett's a paid shill. If you've never heard of James Corbett and the Corbett Report, he's like an um, expat Canadian living abroad in Japan and who does a, you know, sort of, um, I don't know what, I don't know what he is. He's sort of a libertarian noodle of some kind. Uh, I like the guy, though. Uh, he doesn't spout a lot of the, you know, he's not a talking point spouter about people's political platforms. He's more like commentary on what's happening to everybody out in the world and, you know, sort of reflecting on that and observing on that as a, a ostensibly sort of slightly impartial observer of it all. Anyway, Corbett lives in Japan. As I said, he's very prolific. He's been doing this for like 10 or 11 years. Uh, He's on library yesterday. The video is about six days old. So the status that he was at at the time of creating this video should be just about wrapping up right about now. But he made this video and put it out on library to let us all know that his YouTube main channel that he's had for years and that has, I believe, over a million subscribers on YouTube, uh, the Corbett Report uh, YouTube channel, uh, had been struck, uh, was on a seven-day ban for uh, no uploading allowed uh, for spreading medical disinformation. Uh, He said they went back and flagged like three videos of his, two of which were within the last two years or so. Um, But he said they were, he was puzzled about them because they really didn't seem to be uh, dealing with the, you know, the, the Corona pandemic at all. Um, what he was stunned at and pointed out to everybody was that the actual video that um, did sort of ring a bell was one from him from nine years ago. Talking about, interestingly, just about the exact same pandemic, the old swine flu pandemic, and some, you know, funny business at the WHO back at that time, nine years ago. I'm not sure if you heard me. I just said a nine-year-old video they went and found. You know, and as Corbett pointed out, he's like, not only was this video, you know, not disingenuous, uh, you know, was not dishonest, was not misleading, but... It's nine years old. Nobody's watched that video in years. He's like, I'm sure no one's watched that video in years. I haven't received a comment on that video in years. I haven't referenced it in recent times. This very much struck me as very similar to the experience I had that was the straw breaking the camel's back moment for me on Instagram when... I opened up Instagram a few weeks back, right before Christmas, to a notification from them that my post, quote unquote, my post has been removed for a violation of community guidelines for promotion or sale of prohibited substances, drugs. Instagram didn't remove a post. They removed a fucking message out of my Instagram. DMs from some stranger who tried to sell me some Kratom. Many of you listening will be familiar with Kratom. I declined, I politely declined the person's offer and never replied to them again. I neglected to delete this message that was over 10 months old. Instagram was in my DMs calling me a drug buyer or seller and letting me know that that's how they viewed me. Not to put too fine a point on it, but that's exactly what was happening there. 
That's real-time head shrinking. That's real-time behavior modification. That's, hey, fucker, we see you. We see what you think you're doing. Don't do stuff like this on our platform. It's not going to be tolerated. Your messages are not your own. The contents of your phone, your private photos, notes, messages to your friends are not private. Your secret thoughts and desires are not secret. And the people who know your secrets are not interested in preserving the sanctity of your privacy one little bit. In fact, they're actively leveraging everything they know about all of us every single day to shape our conversations and to color our very thoughts. Am I opining here? Am I soapboxing here? Yes, obviously. But I'm also sitting here on the 27th of January of this year, having barely produced a podcast episode already in 2021. And the reason why is because I literally don't know how to move forward in this world as a little wannabe self-identified, self-appointed, would-be journalist, whatever I think I'm aspiring to be. When I know every day that there's a chance that through speaking my heart, that through attempting to speak truth to power, as I've attempted to do since day one with this podcast, with this project. That I could lose this podcast, that I could lose the platform, the hosting that keeps this podcast out there on the web, that I could be deplatformed from social medias that I have come to value for the relationships that they've offered me over the years with digital friends and family around the world. That in some cases, those could be not just uh, suspensions, but bans from entire swathes of the internet. You get locked out of Google, you're locked out of about 10 products, bruh. You get, you get suspended from Facebook or Twitter. Whew. You're square one. You're starting over. You're a nobody on Discord or Reddit just talking to other nobodies once again. So yeah, all right. You know, this has turned into another rant against the internet, but this is this is what's on my mind lately, you guys. This is why you don't get a podcast every week from me. I'm trying to figure out how a person is supposed to podcast honestly and from their heart and question anything without being literally like publicly labeled some kind of kook, some kind of misinformation agent, some kind of radicalized creep of some kind. Uh, you know, you talk the wrong way about any aspect of this past year of our lives publicly. Every single word I say on this track right now, I'm not sure of. I say with a tiny bit of nervousness in my heart. Because even coming this close to speaking the truth or asking what the truth is, what does it get you right now? What does it get you right now? All right. Anybody who's listened to this podcast since day one knows that I will slam my own finger in a car door before I'll publicly identify with or even agree with a self 
professed conservative about almost anything about their philosophy. All right. I really would. (sighs) But I find myself watching, you know, Trump get canceled off of the entire internet, Parler get deplatformed off of the entire internet, and kicked from service after service. A big, uh, another story I saw was at gunforum.com, uh, gunforum, ar15.com, great name. <laughs> Owned by the Brownells, uh, one of the bigger uh, like sporting outfitters in the country, uh, and like ammo online ammo sales dealers, uh, you know, also deplatformed recently, uh, totally deplatformed off of their GoDaddy servers where they had been for like fifteen years. You know, again for supposedly inciting violence, supposedly not moderating their membership well enough. I'm not the first person to say this. I'm not going to be the last person to say this. But what kind of fucking stupid ass tactic is it to deplatform whole communities of people who are doing nothing less than incriminating themselves daily on the platform in their messages to one another and in their public posts to the news feed and stuff like that? Like, why would you shut down a honey trap like that when you could just monitor it and exist on it? occasionally drop in with the old you know alphabet boy warning hey assholes we're here too you guys better settle down i mean you could you could do so many things other than deplatform people because i don't care what anybody says there's no way everyone on parlor was a nazi who was planning to storm the capital and there's no way in the world that everyone on ar-15 dot com with some crazed militia man who's planning on storming their state capitals there's no way in fact no doubt it was a very small minority of both of those communities and communities like them out there doing their thing happened to be using those platforms for those purposes and that shit went down on facebook too as we all know But Facebook's not off the internet, is it? No. Why? Because Facebook runs the internet. The same internet that I think I've got my own little corner of over here. Ha ha ha. Give me a break, Steve. Got nothing. I've got nothing and you've got nothing. The big guys don't have protection guarantees you think people my size do my freedom of speech is an illusion it's a it's a farce it's a lie I don't know what the answer to any of this is, okay? I do think there's a real thing, such as hate hate speech, that, you know, should be strongly condemned, that should be dealt with. Somehow. But I don't know what that, what dealing with that means I do know that free speech has been and is curtailed it's constrained it's limited and it's becoming more limited My personal concerns for this are at the heart of the changes that I'm making to my digital life. I'm going to slowly model these behaviors and hope and pray that those closest to me, including my own wife, slowly 
begin to adapt and adopt some of the same best practices as me. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be an easy year. Please help me continue to survive somehow. Please help keep the wind under my wings. Share the podcast with somebody new. Do that for me this week, will you? Pick an old episode that you enjoyed that you feel represents the show and share it with somebody. When you do that personally and like from the heart and like, hey, this is a good little podcast. This guy's trying. Your friends are going to check it out. They're going to be more open to it. And um, it's something I can't do for myself. You know what I'm saying? I really can't. I need you guys. Uh, I mentioned this in a post yesterday that I did send out on, I think I sent this out on Twitter. Again, it's a work in progress. I'm sunsetting each of these. Uh, I've never been very active on Twitter. I'm sure I received no interaction on this post and probably will get no movement on it. But the post, for what it was worth, was this. As of now, it's 2021, and I haven't received a new review for the podcast in over 12 months. My last review that's been posted to the Apple Podcasts store for the Baked and Awake podcast was in December of 2019. Okay. Um, help me out, you guys. Come on. We're on 113 episodes as of today. Uh I've put out like 50 episodes since that last review. Uh, I need I need some fresh reviews. Give me three stars if you don't want to give me five. Give me two stars if I'm annoying you by asking for this. Do more than just drop two stars, three stars, four stars though. Please write some comments on the podcast in your review. I don't know. I don't know what it does for me. It's certain nobody's going to send me a check because of it, okay? But I think it helps keep the podcast showing up really well in search on Apple Podcasts. Uh, gives me something to read, you know? Makes my heart feel a little bit good when you leave me a comment. So please consider it. Um, just literally go to your Apple Podcasts app on your desktop or in your phone. Um Search up Baked and Awake, and when you find my page in the in the natural search, you can see what reviews I've already received, and it says write a review. That'd be wonderful, you guys. Um, you know, I haven't gotten a new review in a long time, and, and that, you know, does make me a little bit sad, but I balance that sadness, or I temper that sadness, I should say, with some like not optimism um heartening like some some sadness that i or i balance the sadness with some happiness that i get from some wonderful emails that i've received from friends recently um recently and over the whole course of the last year uh tony in spain i'm talking to you right now um dj quad who made the beautiful song for us at the beginning of the episode. We'll hear a little bit more from him at the end of the show. Um, people like my friend Christopher. Christopher, you're a ghost on the internet. But you reached out to me recently and said hello. Let me know that you hadn't totally forgotten me. And I'm glad to have heard from you. And I can't wait for us to pick up where we left off on our conversations so what I want to do actually is read one of these emails for you um, and just yeah I guess just reread it and feel the feelings that I felt when I read it the first time all over again because frankly right now I need the boost I really do I need the boost and I need this kind of energy and um this kind of thing really helps a person out who's in, 
you know, in, in my chair, in this spot. All right, so put yourself in my shoes for a minute. Pack a bowl or something. <laughs> put yourself in my shoes. Pack a bowl. Get stoned. And listen to this message that I got from my new pen pal who is rapidly becoming kind of just a friend to me. When did I receive this email? 3rd of January, right when I needed it too. I mean, I had just quit Instagram like a week or two before this and was feeling pretty low. Buenos dia, Stephen. I found your podcast a couple of weeks ago and subscribed and downloaded all episodes to date. I'm slowly working my way through them. Just to say, I listen to several weed-related podcasts, but I am increasingly liking your own. I like your relaxed approach, selection of interesting topics, and the fact that you're an actual toker, rather than a brain-dead wannabe. Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) I expect you're kept busy, and time is valuable, so don't really expect a reply. I'm a 73-year-old bloke, born and raised in England, and lived in a variety of towns there before I joined the Merchant Navy at age 22. That was the age I first became introduced to weed, and have been a user on and off ever since. I've been all over the world, and have a fair grasp of what it's all about. I emigrated to South Africa, with my wife and two toddlers in 1981, living in several different parts of that unique country. I've never been static for too many years, and have lived in a couple of additional countries, including returning to England in 2003. I've been here in southern Spain for the last seven years, living alone on a small finca, F-I-N-C-A, I'll need to look that up, and grow a few plants each year, which is enough for my needs. I have two grown sons, one of whom is a firefighter living in Ojai, California, and my five-year-old grandson, who's the light of my life. Based on what I've listened to up to now, I'm guessing you and I have a very similar outlook on life. Lots more to talk about, but I'll leave it there for now. Keep on trucking. Stay happy and be well. Tom. Tony. Read it all so well and then called Tony Tom for no reason. Uh, has a wonderful postscript talking about the in, the differences between indica and sativa. Kind of a, uh, a cool article that he found about this. Which we've talked about the illusory difference between indica and sativa. And Carl Linnaeus and what those terms even mean. Cannabis indica, cannabis sativa. Um... Sativa really just means plant it. It's a plant that you plant, by the way. Okay, we've been over this. <laughs> just review. Um, it's a term of convenience. All so long ago. And uh, deserves to be left behind in time. But anyhow, uh, Tony, thank you for the amazing email. For all your emails, uh, I really value our conversations. And uh, I hope that you do make it through the early era of the podcast. Uh, A lot of those older episodes are definitely still taking place during an era when I was even working in the legal industry here in Washington State and definitely still including a bit of content that was, you know, more skewed towards, you know, acting like a cannabis business analysis, legal marketplace, fucking whatever the fuck. Fuck all that shit, okay? Grow your own weed if you can. I really mean it. Stay out of the stores if you can. I really mean it. I've always got thoughts on that. Okay. You guys know that. Always got thoughts on that. So, uh, yeah, Tony, keep listening, man. You get through. You'll find out pretty quick here that a lot of that strain of the week business and testing this new product or that new product business... Yeah, you'll see it. It drops off. Drops right off. We don't do too much of that these days. Um, 
In fact, you got to look hard to find the weed content on Baked and Awake, don't you? Because we got other fish to fry. We really do. Let's take a look at our notes. I got a great message recently uh, from my friend Brittany, Secretarian, friend of Andreas Exertus and I, uh, with a bunch of new information on Wilhelm Reich, uh, a fascinating uh, doctor of the early, early 20th century uh, who's been remembered as a quack and a kook by modern science, um, but who at one point in time was as august a personage as... Uh, any in the uh, then burgeoning field of psychology and psychiatry. Uh, he was a contemporary and former employee of uh, Sigmund Freud uh, to, you know, to name his most illustrious affiliation uh, of his career. Uh, he claimed friendships with Einstein, among others, uh, Wilhelm Reich, I did a great episode on him a while back. If you've never listened to it, please go back and find my episode on Wilhelm Reich uh, and let me know after uh, listening to that content if we should revisit Reich. Um, Brittany dumped a bunch of new stuff on me about him that uh, I could easily get lost in for a couple of weeks and come out the other side with another follow-up episode on him. Um, okay. I've talked about most of what I wanted to talk about this episode, and uh, in an effort to keep things under an hour, I'm going to begin to wind it down for you guys here. Uh, no, there wasn't a big overarching story this week other than the continuation of the conversation about how do we even do this, everybody? How do we stay in this game? The game of talking about things openly and speaking the truth as we see it or asking the questions that we want to answer. I'm over here footing the bill for my own podcast month in and month out, year in and year out at this point. I've got two supporters who have been supporting me since day one. Please, if you've never been to it, uh, check the show notes. I've got a link to my Patreon uh, page in the show notes for this episode. I am trying to uh, do a little bit more with the Patreon platform this coming year in 2021 in the hope that, yes, a few of you, a few of the thousands of people who download this podcast every single episode... Um, that more than two of you will eventually find your way to the Patreon and throw down a buck a month, two bucks a month. I don't even think I have a tier set up above five bucks a month. Uh, I'm not trying to paywall everything over on Patreon. I, I, I'm, I'm utilizing Patreon as the platform that we can use to, that you can use to like safely contribute something um, without like having to put it in an envelope and mail it to my house or something. I don't, I don't know you guys. Um, I'm not like hard up for it and it's not like I can't pay the bill for the internet and stuff like that. But seriously, a tiny little bit of support would, you know, it's just like everything in this world, right? You vote with your dollars just a little bit. Um, you know, that extra help can help me buy new memory cards for my cameras or it can help me buy a new hard drive for my computer so I can save my archive of the work that I've done. Um, it can help go towards those those monthly and annual overhead costs of keeping the podcast up and operational. That's my Patreon shill. Yay. Yeah, nobody likes this, you guys. We don't know what to do, okay? I don't know what to do. I don't want to I don't want to accept disgusting sponsors who I don't want anything to do with and who cold inbox me about random shit that used to get a lot of them on Instagram. You've heard me barely ever even attempt to do that for anybody. 
Calypso CBD being a notable exception, and they actually gave us discount code for their CBD, which is still valid anytime. You go to CalypsoCBD.com and you buy anything you want on their website. You put Baked and Awake in at the uh, coupon line before you check out, and you're going to get 30% off your first order over there. Um, so, you know, that at least was a nominal value for the mention, right? Um, but really, outside of that, I've turned down 15 other opportunities. Opportunities, I say with my fingers in air quotes. You know, I'm not trying to do this to you guys. I don't want to turn this into a sponsor showcase. I don't want to turn this into something where you're enjoying yourself. I'm telling you a story. We're having a good time. And then, bam, some fucking shit about Dollar Shave Club plays in the middle of the podcast. Trying to avoid that. So far, we've managed to do so. But I've also so far managed to never make a dime on this podcast, right? So, um, I don't know. I don't know. What uh, what am I even saying? I don't know. Do I deserve it? I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Maybe I should stop. I don't know. Like, this is, this is literally... That's the internal dialogue that I have with myself sometimes. You guys know what I'm saying. It's crazy out here. I'm not trying to stop, okay? I'm not trying to stop. I'm trying to figure out a path forward. We're going to talk a lot more about hardening our digital best practices. We're going to talk a lot more about new terminology like ClearNet and DarkNet. We're going to learn about browsers like Brave. We're going to learn about browsers like Tor, which is totally legal to use and totally fine and normal to access the internet in that way, through that portal. We're going to learn about this stuff together, you guys. Because, like I said, we've been knowing better. We do know better. Let's start acting like we know better. Let's start acting like social media is the, like, Marlboro Reds of our digital youth. They made us feel cool once. They gave us an excuse to take an extra little break now and then from work that nobody would really blame us for, especially when we could show them a funny meme that we just happen to be looking at as we come out of the bathroom. Their usefulness has long since dissipated, however. The head rush that you used to get from that first hit It's gone now. You gotta suck down half a fag to even catch a buzz. You're going through a pack a day. They're raising the prices they've been. Maybe even don't feel so good inside anymore because it's been a few years you've been using them now. The more I, like, roll around in this analogy, the more apt it feels. You know what I mean? It really does. Okay. Uh, Heavy stuff. Heavy stuff, you guys. It's 2021. I got New Year's resolutions. We'll talk about them next time, I think. But, you know, still trying to get into college was unsuccessful in uh, fall quarter, Uh, really had trouble getting any help from the local community college, like online. I got partially registered, but not fully wanted to talk to a registrar, thought I had requested a meeting, didn't hear back from anybody. The deadline came and went for winter quarter, and here I am still sitting here, not enrolled in college, trying to go to college this coming year, trying to pursue a journalism track 
Okay, so that's how much I'm not trying to quit the podcast. Okay, I'm so much not trying to quit the podcast that I'm mentally preparing myself for going back to college, for getting my bachelor's, for doing it in a field that directly applies to the work that I've been trying to do here on the podcast for the last three years. I will go from being a self-designated, self-appointed, wannabe journalist to hopefully a fully fledged, fully empowered, fully credentialed independent journalist in the next few years. That's my main personal development goal and my main New Year's resolution for 2021 is to, to attend my first class in college on that track. Uh, got a lot of prepping subject matter to go over with you guys in coming episodes. Prepping without prepping, emergency preparedness, family preparedness. These are things that we're going to spend increasing time on in the coming year. So get ready for it. If you're, if that's not what you're about, I guess. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for being here as long as you have. We're always going to be talking about strange topics. We're always going to be talking about fringe topics. We're always going to be talking about conspiratorial matters. But I also really, I live the prepping lifestyle. My family lives the prepping lifestyle. We have for, at this point, quite a few years already. Um, I don't think much about it anymore, all the stuff we do, but whenever friends or family come over and we bring them up to speed or give them the tour and just sort of show them what's going on in the backyard, in the garden, with the chickens, with the quail etc. They're always blown away. They can't believe how much we have going on. Um, and I'm always all about sharing that with you guys as much as I can. Um, and I think that in 2021, it's finally time for us to do even more of that. And uh, a lot of that will come in the form of content that's video content because this stuff, a lot of this stuff is very beneficial and helpful to see visually what's going on. Um, I think emergency preparedness needs to be something that all of us um, stop making, you know, easy, low effort jokes about and start asking ourselves what we're doing to prepare ourselves for basic emergencies. This past year of our lives should definitely have brought that home to a lot of people. Uh, we know it has, right? I think we've got it. Right. I think we'll call it right there, everybody. You guys are absolutely wonderful. I really hope this wasn't a uh, dull and miserable and self-serving episode for everybody. DJ Quad's new theme music is will have been um, suffused throughout this episode by the time I uh, hit publication on this. And uh, I could not be happier. I'm deeply, deeply happy at the product of DJ Quad's work. For me here with this song, I've been looking and wishing for a a sound, a texture, a soundscape for the podcast for this entire time, and I really think that that has been handed to me in the form of our new Baked and Awake theme song. So, uh, everybody, please be strong. Please take care of those around you as best you can. Please. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Please keep listening to the podcast. Share the podcast with somebody for me. My hands are together in supplication as I say these words. Please review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. You will be doing me a personal favor. And I will remember you for it. You're all wonderful. I love this podcast. I love this community. We're going to move past social media together and still find a way to grow, not diminish. I know that I can do that if I have your help. I know that I can. 
you know what to do. Go out and be good. Hit me up. Tell me what you want to hear about. Tell me if you want to come on and talk with me. We do that now. I love it. Conversations are a wonderful thing. We can do a video conference and do it on YouTube. You can call me on the regular phone. Or just do audio. Don't even have to comb your hair. Don't even have to brush your teeth. I'll never know. (laughs) But we'd all benefit from hearing your voice. So, come on. Tell me your story. Tell us what you've got to say. We'll be back together again real soon. Rebooting in three, two, one. shit anyway.